What's going on guys, a huge trade down in the NHL between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Cardo Avalanche with the Leafs getting Tyson Perry and Alex Kerfoot along with a 6th round pick for Kadri, Rosen and a 3rd. Obviously the Leafs have been looking for a puck moving offensive right handed defenseman for like the past 3 seasons and they got one of the best in the NHL in my opinion in Tyson Berry. So a huge win here for the Leafs. Now Berry only does have 1 year left on his contract almost for sure is going to be going to UFA as he's going to get a big payday, probably $8 million plus, and the Leafs just can't afford that. But next year, like, their team is going to be so stacked. They still have the cap room. Should be able to bring back Marner. I mean, I love this move by uh, Kyle Dubas. I think it's a great trade. So um, Barry here, 27 years old, ASICs overall, currently making 5.5. Like I said, I think he gets 8 plus um, next year as a free agent. Um, again, only one year left in real life. And on top of this too, they actually got him at 50%, so just gives them even more money to try and sign Marner, as well as Kerfoot, who actually needs a new contract. Uh, 24, 81, medium top six. Um, my guess probably gets two and a half to three on like a two year bridge deal. Um, he was actually a fifth round pick in 2012 by the Devils, so um, turned out to be a pretty you know solid player. I feel like the difference between Kadri and him is definitely not Tyson Berry, even for one year. Like, I do think Kadri's a very good player. Um, definitely probably underutilized on the Leafs as a third-line center, for sure. Colorado now has a legitimate second-line center behind McKinnon, something they kind of lacked, but I feel like the price they paid is huge. Like, at the deadline, if they traded Berry, they probably could have gotten first top prospect. I'm guessing they just value Kadri as an established player on a very good contract, um, more than the rest of that. I feel like Kadri honestly probably has... A top 20 forward contract in the NHL like I'm not saying he's a top 20 forward but his contract is probably top 20 for forwards like I think it's that good so on um, the Leafs obviously give up Kadri their third line center uh, 27 84 again four and a half million for Kadri he scored 30 goals I don't know a few times now three more years especially with the current market Kevin Hayes getting seven million uh, it's a very very good contract uh, now Kyle Rosen I think he's better in real life than he is in this game um, where do we have him here? He's down low. So 24, 72, medium 7th D. I feel like he's he's better than that. Like he's not that bad. Um, probably like should be 75, 76, medium top six or something. Uh, Lee's also gave up a 2020 third round pick. But as you can see there, like Colorado does want Kadri. They know they need a second line center. They want the third. Uh, the, the value on Colorado is probably double if not more. And then the fact that the Leafs also get Colorado to keep 50% of that contract again. Just to help them, you know, keeping Marner. Of course, they now have to re-sign Kerfoot. Um, they also have to give CC a contract. I'm not sure if they're going to keep CC or if they're just going to let him go. I assume they're going to try and keep him. But yeah, the Avs are probably going to tell us to like screw off here. Trade rejected. Great thing called the create trade block. Could live with what you're sending us, but this is a no deal. Your offer is woefully insufficient. Okay, yeah. Uh, so they basically, they're saying they want Kadri, but they don't want him at this price, which I think is fair. Um, also, too, guys, right now we're trading for Barry with two years left. Real life, obviously, it's one year left, so he'd have a bit less value, but still, um, I don't think if we did it in-game like a year later, uh, it'd be enough to try to change the value to make this trade go through. I actually have the difficulty on easy right now. Um, two, I didn't want to risk, like, um, any of the players' contracts changing, like maybe Kerfoot gets an extension or something, which, of course, would also trade the value. And since we're on the lease right now, I actually want to try out the trade they made with Ottawa. I feel like Ottawa has so many former Leafs now, it's kind of insane. So, um, like we mentioned, they're getting back Cody CC. Curious to see what that deal is going to look like. I feel like they try and get him for less money, but longer terms. I think they could make that happen. Um, so with CC, they also got Ben Harper, Aaron LeChuck. Um, Aaron LeChuck actually played for the Spitz, was pretty good there. Ben Harper, kind of like a younger defenseman. So apparently LeChuck isn't in franchise mode, so we'll just use Nick Paul instead. I think he actually has like slightly more value, but it should be about the same. And then they also get, I think, a third round pick 2020. The fact that like everyone knew Toronto was trying to trade Zaitsev, I think it's kind of insane. I'm not sure which one it is. Honestly, we'll go with the lower one just to try and make this trade go through. I still feel like it won't. Like Toronto was trying to trade Zaitsev, still got CC a third rounder. Uh, they'd have to give up Connor Brown, which I feel like is definitely a bit of a loss. I know a lot of Oilers fans thought they'd get him for like Matt Benning. Um, as it turns out, they did trade him here essentially for defensemen. Also, totally forgot to show you guys the stats. So, Carcone, 22, 66, medium bomb, 6. Um, again, not really a big part of this trade. Brown, I think, is going to be a decent player. He could honestly play in the top 6 for Ottawa. Uh, 24, 80, medium top 9. Decent deal, too. 2.1 million. Zaitsev, 4.5 million for the next 5 years. I mean, this current, like, you know, climate, I guess, for uh, free agent signing, it's not terrible. And Ottawa has so much cap space anyways. 
and then CC what's he? He's a 79, so they have him three lower than Zaitsev. I feel like they're not gonna pay him four and a half million. I feel like they're gonna try and do like a two, three year deal at like three and a half. Because I think for like one year, he has to get paid that to like qualify him, or even if they go to arbitration, so they'd have to get him to agree to a, a longer term. So look at the value here. This actually might go through where I thought no way Ottawa says yes in game, but we'll see what happens. And the trade does go through. Now it is on easy. Um, but still, I'm kind of surprised. This is kind of surprising, guys. After the Ottawa trade, I forced the Barry trade through, and the Maple Leafs team stats actually dropped from champion to contender, even though I feel like their team going into the next season is even better than last year. Um, honestly, like if I had to pick an early winner for GM of the year, it goes to Kyle Dubas. Um, building this team, I assume like he's going to get Marner signed. They have the cap space, especially with Horton on LTIR, and I love this roster. So uh, top six should be what they had last year. You got Janssen, Matthews, Nylander. Marner, Tavares, Hyman, interchangeable, basically a 1A, 1B. Third line, I'm guessing you got Kerfoot, Spezza, and Kapanen. Fourth line there, Patan, Shore, and Moore. I don't think that's actually kind of cool. Nick Shore and Bo Bennett had actually already created for the Denver alumni team, and both those guys got signed as uh, free agents today, so I thought that was cool. Um, two, like, with the bomb six, they have Kerfoot, Spezza, Honestly, every one of these bottom six guys, except for, I'd say, Kapanen, can play center. So, I'm not sure who's going to be the 3C, 4C. Maybe they like the fact they can, you know, have guys interchange and just kind of mix around with it. But, top six is insane. The bottom six, honestly, is very solid as well. And their defense now, Riley, Barry, not sure if they pair them up or not. But, still, like, so much offense there with the power play. You got Dermot, you got Muzzin. Uh, Gravel, I'm guessing, is a 60. Honestly, a ton of different guys could be that. Liljegren, maybe, if he makes the team. Sandin. Um, Rinchin they brought back, who knows, CC there if they sign him, goalies, right now, Anderson obviously still the starter, Hutchison I'm guessing will be the backup, we'll see what the power play looks like in this, Tavares, Matthews, Marner, honestly even if that's what the power play is, that's insane, so very excited to see the Maple Leafs team next year, uh, honestly with all that high power offense, Barry on the back end, uh, should be a ton of fun to watch. Also guys I want to give you your first look at Tyson Barry as a trial Maple Leaf, we'll see how this looks here, I feel like it'll look good. Um, that doesn't really look like Tyson Berry, I'm not going to lie, but um, it has him, has his name, has his number. Um, yeah, for the front, it doesn't look like him, but right there, I guess that's what it'll look like. So we'll try the trade now from the ass perspective. I'm going to do it on hard difficulty as well, but I feel like it should still go through. It's that much of a good deal for the Leafs. So like I was saying, guys, we're going to try to trade as the Avalanche. As you can see here, at least want all three things, Barry, Kerfoot, and a sixth. Uh, I forgot to mention, too, I think Sackett came out and said uh, the reason they made this trade was because they knew... Barry was going to go to UFA, or like for him not to go to UFA it was going to cost them a ton of money, and they didn't want to pay him that as they have Kill McCarr, a good young defenseman, just drafted Byram. And I, I get it and I don't because like they do have good young defensemen coming up, but they also have a ton of cap space. Um, should have, I think, even more next year. So I don't know. I guess, you know, if they got Kaji, they felt like they needed that more. Plus, you know, they're going to have to sign Byram and McCarr eventually as well. Maybe it makes sense. Um, two with the third round pick here. Forgot to mention the Ottawa trade. It was the Columbus pick, but um, yeah, at least only the third round on the block. But look at the value. It's double on our side. I do have the difficulty on hard to try and make this tougher to go through. We'll see what the Leafs say here. Trade is still accepted. Like I said, I think the Leafs fleeced them. So after that trade, guys, Carlos team stats actually went down from contender to hopeful. So uh, EA definitely did not like that trade. Um, obviously, their forward group here is not going to look like this. Um, first line will definitely look like this. Kadri will be the second line center, but uh, Broussard, Soderberg. Um, Soderberg's traded. Broussard, I don't think they're going to be bringing him back. Although he still is a UFA, so you never know. Uh, I feel like Carter's definitely not done yet. Uh, defense, though, this is my best guess how it's going to look, assuming they don't add anyone. So, Gerard Johnson, top pair. Makar, Zadarov, second. Cole, and maybe Lindholm is the sixth guy. Uh, I don't really think Byron's making it um, in his first year, but... Defense, I don't know, without Barry there, it's really not that good. I feel like it'll definitely be a top-heavy team still. They just have Kadri now as a second-line center, opposed to maybe a bit more help on defense with Barry. Um, also, too, in terms of goaltending, we know they lost Varlamov, the Islanders, so Grubauer is now the starter. I feel like Grubauer is a good goalie um, when he's not, like, the starter that's going to be leaned on heavily, so I'm thinking, like, a max of 40 games for him. Uh, he has to be, like, the starter playing 50-plus games. I don't know. I feel like he's kind of like, you know, Brian Elliott, Carter Hutton. They're good, but they don't have to play too much. So he could prove me wrong this year. That could definitely happen. But uh, I don't really know who the backup's going to be either. I feel like they should try and get a better backup than whoever I saw they have now, Cap Friendly, uh, just, you know, to help Grubauer out. But that's going to be it, guys, I think. Actually, one more thing I do want to show you guys. 
um, Kadri here in the Avalanche jersey. Kadri was actually the longest standing Maple Leaf before obviously this trade happened, so that's kind of crazy. I think now it's probably Morgan Riley, so um, definitely a lot of turnover there in Toronto. Kadri here as an Avalanche honestly doesn't look terrible. I mean, it looks a little bit different. You're used to seeing it as a Maple Leaf, but um, it doesn't look terrible. So I'll hear your guys' thoughts on the two Maple Leafs trades there. Um, obviously, in game, the Ottawa one looked to be pretty fair in real life. I think Dubis won both those trades by a landslide, but uh, maybe you guys have some different opinions. As always, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.